Welcome to the webinar of Alto University, uh, where we are going to discuss about a master's program called Spatial Planning and Transportation Engineering. Uh, in the studio today, uh, I'm having uh, my colleague uh, Claudio Roncoli. Maybe I can introduce myself that I am Marketa Kytta, uh, a professor of land use planning in Alta University in a Spatial Planning and Transportation Engineering uh, Group. And I'm Claudio Roncoli, also assistant professor at Alta University. My expertise is transportation engineering. Yes, and we are also having three more persons. You will meet them later. Uh, we will have uh, Päivi Kaupunen, a planning officer uh, who is responsible in study affairs. And we are also having two students Emily Johnson and Peter Hartjuk, uh, who you will meet um, a, a bit later. And today we are going to talk uh, or discuss with you uh, about the main ideas or the main focus in the master's program, SPT master's program, the structure of the program, and also more generally how it is like to study in Alta University and living in Finland more generally. Uh, and as I also, also mentioned, we are having two student interviews. Yes, and one important remark, uh, feel free to ask us any question. Uh, there is a specific chat. So share the question with us. We'll try to answer them uh, during our talk or at the end of, of, of the of the webinar, if not possible earlier. So anytime. Yes, yeah. anytime. You don't have to wait. Okay, just a very brief introduction of Alto University. Uh, as, as our motto says, so we are a multidisciplinary university. So we try to combine engineering with, with, with arts and business and, and any other humanity studies. And uh, it's a great place where, where, where we can actually build a multidisciplinary uh, expertise. And then we are a large university in Finland. And a few <clears throat> bits more details. So what's, what we always like to say is that when you are here, you get more than a degree. Uh, it's, it's one of the biggest universities in Finland, as I said before. In particular, it's a very international university. Uh, we have plenty of uh, both faculties, so professors, teachers, and students, which come, which come from different countries. Uh, it has a very nice uh, community life and a new campus, growing campus at least, uh, with, with its, which is uh, very nice, with very nice design. As you can see from, from the photos there, for example, we are now recording this webinar in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in our current library, so which is actually our learning center, which is a, can be seen at the bottom figure. Actually, this, the building originally designed by Alvar Aalto, a very famous Finnish architect, but uh, the premises have been recently renovated. Yes, and quite important also, uh, Aalto University is very famous for its startup scene, so there is a lot of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship going on and happening here, so if you are interested in, in those topics, this is definitely a great place to come and learn. Well, next, uh, it's time to um, start concentrating a bit more to the master's program of uh, spatial planning and transportation engineering. Uh, the program is not very old. Uh, it only started in 2016. And the, the, the main idea uh, with the program was that we want to uh, teach uh, spatial planning and transportation uh, engineering as integrated uh, fields. Uh, uh, so we, very paradoxically, uh, these, uh, top, these teams are very often still uh, taught in separate pro programs and we think it is a very big mistake and our program is trying to address that uh, big gap in the field. What is also characteristic uh, of our program is that, uh, as, as you probably know, our program is located in School of Engineering in Alta University, 
but but it clearly also has some kind of human twist uh, we have so, social aspects very much presented in our program and and maybe it's it's also peculiar that i as a program director uh, I, I have background in psychology, so my personal aim is very much to bring in this human aspect to our program. And finally, uh, our program uh, is uh, building links to practice both in our research and very much uh, so also in our education. So in, in, in this program, uh, practice uh, orientation is evident. We uh, accept yearly about uh, 35 students who start in our program. Um, about half of the students have typically come from our own bachelor program and half uh, uh, el elsewhere from other Finnish universities or uh, abroad. And uh, our teachers represent a quite large variety of backgrounds. Like I already said, I am a psychologist, we have uh, transport engineers, we have uh, architects, we have social scientists. Who else? Who did I forget? Mm, well, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, but, but maybe the, the diversity of students' background is even higher. Uh, we have a very multidisciplinary um, um, students coming from uh, uh, disciplines like uh, geography, landscape architecture, mathematics, social sciences, environmental sciences, political sciences, uh, you name it. And as you already have noticed, the, the study language is English. Uh, in, in some courses it is also possible to uh, f finish um, study coursework in, in Finnish and Swedish, but the main language obviously is English. Yes, and we can go now a little bit in more details on what is the structure of our, uh, of our program. Uh, we, we have, uh, so for all the students, we'll have to take uh, and pass a set of common studies. And these common studies are, in a sense, building the fundamentals of, of spatial planning and transportation engineering. Uh, so our idea is that all our students will get um, some basic understanding of both fields. And then, so you can see here, these are the names of the courses of, of, for next year. So you, and this again is a very diverse uh, range of students already from, from the, the, the foundation of mobility systems to the theories of planning. And then, and, and then some also more practical activities, which, which is in our case within the studios. So where there is some more hands-on activities. And after these four credits of common studies on the top of that, you will be free to choose uh, 20 credits of advanced studies. And at the moment, what we offer within our program uh, are those courses. Uh, so here again, you have the freedom of combining uh, some of the core activities of, of special planning and transportation in what is actually going to be your own profile. So it, it, we leave you a lot of freedom in building your profile within the field. And on the top of, of again, the, the, these courses at the moment, so we have eight of these uh, advanced study courses. You can, you can create your own combination. Uh, you are also free to add uh, 30 credits of elective studies chosen essentially between uh, among the, the widest, wider offer of, of Alto University, as well as uh, you will have the chance of completing some of these credits or all of these 30 credits uh, by spending some time abroad in some exchange program. Um, and just to give you an example of some more concrete collaboration that we have, for example, of, uh, at the moment, uh, we have established some, some collaborations with the Urban Studies and Planning Program from the University of Helsinki, uh, from the Geography Program, again from the University of Helsinki, and now we are starting this new collaboration with the new EIT Urban Mobility Program within Alto. Uh, so this is what uh, is our uh, offer for what it concerns courses. Uh, on the top 
of the courses, then you will also have to, to uh, complete a master thesis. And we'll, we'll be here to guide you uh, through that process. <laughs> and yeah. Sure. So uh, now uh, we show you a very short video uh, about uh, a very nice new space, which is called the Living Plus Hub. Uh, that is a, a building or, or space where we are going to concentrate all our teaching from next year on. The, the premises have uh, wonderful facilities, as you can see. Uh, there are cool um, uh, tools like the city scope model you just saw, uh, very nice um, seminar rooms and, and, and larger spaces uh, where we are can very flexible way um, use in our different courses. Here you see one event organized in that um, space recently, just a few weeks ago. Sorry, we don't always have so good food available, but maybe sometimes. And here, finally, you can see our very nice uh, studio sp space. Uh, it's called Alta Build Environment uh, Lab. Uh, and that studio space is, uh, of course, especially valuable in our studio courses. So what is happening? OK. Uh, and we already mentioned before that we do close collaboration with uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, mainly with cities and companies in, in many of our courses, not only in studio courses, which where they are more or less mandatory, but also in other courses. Here is one example. Uh, we have organized uh, special uh, geodesign workshop as part of our Smart and Livable City Studio course. And uh, last spring we had a case study uh, we, that we organized together with City of Espo, where we um, designed the future of one neighborhood uh, together with city officials, students and researchers. And I, it was a lot of fun. Yes, and if you wonder what what will happen after you take this master, we, we can uh, at least based on our experience. So we have, we have observed that our graduates can have a very again multi with very many uh, specialization in their professional roles. So it can span uh, to, to, to many degrees. So from from being planner at urban level, regional level, transportation planners. Uh, but also uh, they can start working uh, more as traffic engineers or transportation modelers or going into uh, being analysts, policy makers, and then any kind of other positions. Of course, researcher is, is always an option in a certain sense. But uh, what, what has been also, I mean, uh, our idea within this program is this thanks to these new skills that we'll actually achieve, you may actually even be able to create new uh jobs that were not existing before and then we have actually one recent example that maybe yeah, mark a, yeah we had a, about it. Uh, one of our students uh, uh, did uh, as his master's uh, thesis a uh, project related to uh, vulnerability strategies and uh, he realized the work uh, together with city of helsinki and uh, what happened later was that uh, the city was super excited about his work so actually they established a whole new position for him uh, so he can now uh, continue his uh, work uh, in this theme of vulnerability in city and now it's time to invite uh, our students here please Okay. Hello. So yes. here is Emily and Hi. here is Peter. So we will do short interviews to both uh, students. And, and remember, you can also ask questions. It would be super good if you would have some questions here. Yes. Okay. I think we can start with, with Petra. 
So Peter is an alumnus of our SPT program, so he finished some time ago. So can you just start by telling shortly about your story and how did you end up actually being an SPT student at first? Okay, so my story is uh, not a typical one because I started as an exchange student in Alto, but I liked the studies very much and I decided to stay for the whole master's program. And uh, then I found a job here and now I started working in Finland and I've been working for more than a year full time already. Okay, excellent. And can you maybe describe a bit how, how the relation between the SPT studies and now your current work and then the work environment in general here? Well, I work now as a researcher slash transport modeler. So I'm using uh, the concepts of the SPT studies almost every day. And uh, I even have, you know, some teacher's thoughts uh, popping up every time I, I try out some new concept or something like that. And it, it gives me more ideas at work and it uh, enables me to um, work on new stuff mm -hmm. much easier. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's great. And then, so now you've been in Finland so for about three years or something more than that, I think. And it seems, well, you're well settled here. So can you maybe tell us something about, well, tell us and tell our attendees something about moving and, and settling here. How yes. was it for you? Yes. Uh, so there are like various levels, like, uh, First of all, it's uh, quite easy to get around because you can speak English everywhere. On the other hand, learning the local language is a challenge that I think you, you should take once in your life at least, because it's the one that you will not regret. And uh, then I, I like the environment here. Helsinki is extremely clean city. It's like if you walk around, it's almost like a spa. And uh, then I, I really enjoy, especially like two times of the year. First, like the summer, it's like very decent temperatures. It could be the most exciting summer with like 25 degrees. And the second is the, the winters, especially February, when we get the sunny part of winter with lots of snow. And I can do all the winter sports that I like and even crazy stuff like walking on the sea and lots of cross country skiing and this kind of stuff. Okay, very good. Thanks for your answers. Yep. All right. Uh, and, and now let's move on to Emily. Um, I, Emily, you come from the US, mm -hmm. and so can you tell us uh, how did you end up studying, studying here in Finland, yes. and, and maybe also something about your background? Yes, well there's, there's two parts to it. The, um, the coming to Finland was um, a bit of an easy decision for me because my partner is Finnish, and we really had two choices, whether it was going to stay in the States or come to Finland. And I know Claudia is going to talk more about the quality of life here in Finland, but that was a really big draw, knowing that the quality of life here is so good. What do you mean by quality of life? Oh, just walkability, environment, clean water, clean air, um, so child friendly too. So, you know, it's like a good place to like live your life. So that was something that I was looking for as a place that I can really like live after mm -hmm. school. Um, as far as my background goes, I studied landscape architecture for my bachelor's degree, and I focused on more of the um, process side rather than the product and actual physical design. I was really interested in how um, the process can influence kids. Kids are involved in the process of design or planning. And um, my advisor in my bachelor's program said, when you're picking out your university, just find the researcher who does something you're excited about. And so I found a researcher that I wanted to work underneath. Um, and that's really why I'm here at Alto, is because I found someone who has a really shared interest with me. Do you mean me? I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so lovely. Um, so uh, you, you knew where you came, to, mm -hmm. but has it 
been a surprise to you like now you are experiencing your first autumn mm -hmm. you know days get darker and it gets colder that mm -hmm. is not a challenge to you or <laughs> it, is, it has come so naturally isn't my friends from like southern europe have said the same thing where it's just like oh wow it's really not that hard to get used to the weather especially there's so much here to distract you whether it's being really busy with classes or if you're like me and you're also really busy with social life and going to you know clubs and events and sauna evenings you really don't feel the cold when you're going yeah to i was going anything. to ask that have you already <laughs> tried sauna <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> obviously you have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um but uh, going back to your studies that you started this autumn mm -hmm. how ha has it felt so far I, feel free to be critical too <laughs> yeah yeah I, it's a it's a really heavy workload and I know people have warned me like master's degree gets serious um, and it's really true there's a lot of work a lot of reading and if you're really interested in it it's gonna feel overwhelming like how am I going to cram all of this into my brain at one mm. time but at the same time I think um, the whole the whole um, program and even individual professors are really willing to talk to you about you know, if you want to focus on something that interests you more or shift your schedule slightly or shift the, the, your whole approach to the study slightly, I think there's a lot, um, there's just a lot of understanding, like you're here to learn, you want something out of your education mm -hmm. and um, just all the staff and faculty are, have been really supportive yeah. of that. And surely you can design your own timetable. There is quite a lot of freedom yeah. uh, that, that uh, if it feels overwhelming, mm -hmm. then you can drop some courses and come back later. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. And I've been doing so much outside of just studies that that's sort of what I've ended up doing. So, you know, yeah. I don't have to do everything right now. I can do a little bit yeah. later since I'm doing so much outside of school. Uh, or, uh, and that, that brings me to asking you that, um, can you tell anything uh, to us about student life here in the campus in Otaniemi? Yes. Or in yes. Alta University? You know, actually, I got, um, we always get a weekly newsletter from the student union from AYY, and we just got it the other day, and it's just, it's so typical looking through the email. It's like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there's an <laughs> event every single day, whether it's volunteering, sauna evening, dinner party, there's always something every day. You could never do it all. Um, but if you if you want to meet people, if you want to hang out with friends, um, volunteer, whatever it is, there's going to be so many opportunities. Um, and if that all seems way too overwhelming, I think really the foundation of of kind of friendships and socializing is just grabbing mm. coffee and lunch between yeah. classes, and and that's really that's my staple. Yeah. In mm -hmm. fact, I have to say that at uh, at I admire the, the the guild activities a lot and and i i used to say that the curriculum you are having there is probably even more important than the the official uh, curriculum uh, in the university because you know learn so many useful skills mm -hmm. for example how to realize projects with very limited resources <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's probably something you end up uh, valuing mm -hmm. All right, we have a question yes. here. We actually have a question about uh, about the career in transportation planning in the Helsinki area, and if well, fluent Finnish language is really needed, and then some specific technical knowledge. And so, in general, what the problem exactly solving in transport at work, so in this kind of jobs, and then some question that that if uh, Helsinki is a slowly moving municipal environment. Hmm. Uh, I for sure can answer that Helsinki is not a slowly moving municipal environment. A lot of things happen all the time. This, this for sure. Uh, uh, at, at the moment, I don't think Finnish language itself is maybe a huge uh, barrier in the job market. I don't know if you have different experiences. I, I would say it's it's really good to have a uh, no. good uh, proficiency if you are going for really some like municipality level job. Uh, it's good to know Finnish, but mm -hmm. there are many opportunities also outside the municipal level, like in the private sphere. It's it's much easier to get an English speaking job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, definitely, and the kind of problems they solve are really many. 
I mean, it's 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 so talking about transportation planning. There, there is from from the level of the strategic planning in the sense of of the transportation system at regional level uh, up to the level of of uh, road construction planning. I mean, and, and our graduates are ready to span throughout all throughout all, all these problems, so all these range of problems. Yes, in fact, uh, uh, I could perhaps read this question related slowly moving municipal environment in a different way that maybe it refers to mm -hmm. uh, the vocable and ah, uh, okay. active uh, uh, transport uh, topic and uh, I just can mention that my group is very much doing this research on these topics and there are other many uh, other of us uh, who are very interested in those topics. There is another question but should we take that Maybe later? Maybe that could go later, yes. Yes, there is a question about um, uh, application process yep. so that can uh, maybe come a bit later so thank you very much you. Uh, emily and peter that was yeah, uh, very good you. maybe we will might need you later so maybe you yes. can stay okay. here yeah. please um oops sorry yes and well they said our students and former students already said something very nice about life in finland so you heard already uh if you're not from here so finland is a very a uh, beautiful country to live in, so the, the society is very well organized and, and in a sense uh, you always have a feeling of, of safety when, when walking around and cleanness, and it's uh, from this perspective a very nice place to live, for sure. Uh, so as said, almost everybody speaks uh, English, so if your plan is not to, to settle here for long term, there is absolutely no need to learn Finnish. Of course, it's a plus for your social life to learn it, and, and that, that's something definitely that one may consider, but, but it's not compulsory. That, that's, that's our important uh, message here. Um, well, university is located in the greater Helsinki area, so this is where we are. Uh, Helsinki is always ranked very high uh, in terms of livability index, so it's a very livable city, uh, as said, so we have a very nice walkable city center and then yeah very very efficient public transport system so you won't need for sure uh, a car essentially you can go around and then participate in any kind of events uh, very easily and then so i said before there is a very nice startup culture around here so alto is one of the always one of the highest ranked as a university in, in this perspective so in promoting innovation we have several initiatives where we can actually but you can actually uh you can get help and support and all this kind of uh, useful uh, useful support in case you, you this is your uh, your path um there is actually a very interesting uh, website a very important website which is studying finland where you can find these and many many more informations so uh this is something that I would definitely advise you to visit and see uh, what's there. Of course, feel also free to ask us other questions. Mm -hmm. And oh, all right. Yes. Uh, at this point, uh, I I want to summarize a little bit what we have seen so far. This is actually. Uh, because there might be some of you who have attended the webinar a bit later. So um, we have talked a lot about the foundation of the SPD program, Spatial Planning and Transportation Engineering pro program. That is really an excellent example of truly multidisciplinary master's program. And we also uh, talked about the very important theme that how Alta University actually is able to provide you with much more than just a degree. And we, we finally talked quite a lot about how it is to live in Finland, that despite of some challenges <laughs> uh, related to weather and so on, we, there are a lot of benefits uh, in living in this country. And, and now we have one more part left, 
uh, and that part relates to the master's program admission process um, here in Alta. So now I will invite Päivi Kaupinen to join us. She will say a few words uh, about the admission process. Okay, hello. So now you are ready to apply to our program. So the application period runs from 2nd of December to 3rd of January. And our application form, electronic application form is open during that time. And about the timetable, so admission results will be published in the end of March. And, and what else? Would you like to know? Actually, there are some questions here. Okay. Uh, somebody is asking that if uh, she or he is uh, a graduate, has been graduated from, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is this? Uni University of Applied Sciences. Yes, in business in, yeah. Uh, yeah. program. Yeah. Uh, are, is he or she eligible to apply to SVT program? Yes. If you, if you, if student got a um, bachelor degree, from from um, applied, uh, University of Applied Sciences, so she uh, he is eligible. Eligible. So, yeah, yes. Eligible. Okay. So there is no. And then another question, and between a motivation letter and C, we which one is weighted higher uh, I, in the student selection process? Uh, those those both are compulsory documents in our application forms and they are part of our academic evaluation process and I think that they are quite important. Motivation is quite important thing, yes. I suppose, yeah. And, but there, I think that there is no big way, nothing between them, is, yes. it, is it? Yes. Well, yeah, I would also uh, mm. emphasize that uh, motivation letter is important so it is just not a uh, formality we really truly read each motivation letter carefully mm. yes uh, there is still another question but uh, maybe that is we already answered that that does background in economics uh, provide the required pre -requ for yeah, this yeah, program yeah. yes yeah it's okay yes yeah. well yeah uh, are there more questions related to admission if, if I, I cannot see right now any uh, mm -hmm. here is one more uh, would, would it be possible to ask a highly specific sure. question sure. by email from Paivi yeah don't hesitate to ask we will answer your questions. And we got the um, admission services also in Aalto University. And their email address is admissions at aalto.fi. So it's okay. It's uh, they, they, I've seen they, they it. Yeah, yeah. But you can, uh, of course, you can ask straight from me. Directly. Maybe directly. from Bailey, you yeah. get more uh, mm. specific answers related to our program exactly yeah, yeah, so uh, somebody hasn't really found helpful the um, responses from admission at alto.fi mm -hmm. yeah. and maybe it's because they are answering questions from all different programs yeah, sure. so remember Paivi's uh, email Paivi dot Paivi dot dot at alto dot Yes, and one more uh, related to admission. Uh, Somebody is asking uh, if they don't have work-related experience, is it still uh, counted? Counted, or yeah, yeah. Is it? Um, um, it's academic evaluation <laughs> about. Of course, it might be one. Criteria, but it's not official criteria for us. It is if not it compulsory. Be, it's not compulsory. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
yes. Um, yeah, yes, it's true that here in, in Finland, fresh graduated from a bachelor program might be hard to find a, a job as an engineer. And it, it is very typical that uh, many students uh, continue directly from bachelor to yeah, master's, master's level. Yeah. Okay. So it is not um, compulsory to have work experience. Mm -hmm. That's right. So maybe we, we, we can invite you back uh, mm -hmm. if there are more yeah, questions related mm -hmm. to... Um, yes, we, we already covered those questions. So maybe you come back. Yes. Yes, so there are. So again, feel free to ask us more questions. Uh, so we will now try to, to answer uh, the other questions that are in the chat, if possible, uh, in the time that that remains. Uh, but anyway, now or in the future, feel free to, to approach us anytime. These are our, 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 our email addresses, so Marketo or myself, no problem. Uh, you can contact us anytime and of course uh, Pivy for anything that relates to the practical details on the on the admission um there is one question here that yes. we didn't uh, yet answer which was about the research projects in Ooh. SBT program uh, or a group uh, so there uh, please visit the web pages of our research group they might be a little bit hard to find, but uh, uh, I think from our master's program um, pages, there is a link to uh, the web pages of our research group. Uh, but also if you Google School of Engineering and their Spatial Planning and Transportation Engineering research group, you should find us. Mm -hmm. So actually our group is very active uh, in research we have uh, all the time uh, very many uh, research projects going on and do you want to mention an example of your ongoing research uh, pro projects well yes so we have a lot of well in a sense a lot of interest a lot of projects here around around these new mobility services coming like mobility as a service and like uh, vehicle automation and connectivity, what will be there, the, the impact of, let's say, self-driving vehicles on, on, on our society, in our roads, etc. And again, we take this from a multidisciplinary perspective, so joining the technical aspects and then the human aspects. So uh, we have various of these initiatives, uh, both at Finnish level, international level projects. And again, our research groups are, are international and multidisciplinary. So, yes. uh, this is something definitely uh, interesting. And then, well, in, in many cases, uh, if you come to SPT, you will meet these researchers. Our doctoral students sometimes go and give some lectures during, during the, 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 normal, uh, the normal courses. And then and they are involved sometimes in supervision of students and this kind of activities. Yeah, that is very much so in yeah. my team too. And Maybe I can just mention that I, I have also several projects going on where always the human aspect uh, in planning and design is in the focus. And my, my, my research group has been specialized doing place-based uh, human uh, environment research and topic, the topics we have studied lately are include, for example, health promotive environments and active living research, age friendly research, uh, environments, uh, child friendly environments, uh, and so on. And we also do a lot of research uh, about participatory planning uh, practices here in Finland and elsewhere. But let's see what other uh, Yes. Questions we well, are having. Just one, one quick addition to the question before about research projects. Uh, Google now you can find a lot of information. So I'm, I'm sure some of us has, has private web pages in a sense of research web pages. So you can just Google our names and then 
you may find some more information than, than what's it also the, what you can find from the Alto website. So just as a tip. And surely you can uh, always Google, uh, check the Google Scholar profiles of our uh, professors and, and researchers. We, the, it's very easy then to find out what, what, what these guys are actually uh, doing research about. Mm -hmm. Somebody missed what was Baby's name. Um, well, this uh, whole uh, show is recorded, so you can check that uh, later. But maybe we yeah, can we, we can go back quickly. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't have. Let, let me go quickly back. Oh. <laughs> this takes too much time, but um, here, Päivi Kauppinen, but when you use, uh, I want to send her email, uh, remember not to use those dots on top of A, just uh, P-A-A. P-A-I. P-A-I, yes. All right. So, Please check what, what questions we are still having. Yeah, so there is a question again, maybe for, for, for Pavi. So how many spots you have open in the application process? I guess the question is related to, to external applicants. Uh, maybe Pavi, you can come yes. back here. Yes, we have a, please sit down. Do you want to? Yeah, uh, we have a quota for 20 students in this time. So uh, someone asked about the, uh, uh, academic evaluation criteria, I think so. I saw the yes, questions. Yeah, it's here. yeah. So, what is the criteria? We, yeah, and then yeah, we got four criteria. Uh, first, we have a university higher education institution, this is the first one. And the other one is degree and relevance of studies, it's quite important. And also, academic performance, GPA, and motivation and commitment to the program. These are the four, four criteria. Did you get them? I hope. Yeah, you can find them from our website. Yes. They are all told there. But as, as you heard, one of the criteria oh, is the quality of motivation yeah. letter. Yeah. That is something you can invest in. Yeah. And then, then your study performance, you, the quality of your degree and quality of your university. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, is there still something? Uh, I think we, we answer all the questions that came. Mm -hmm. um, yes. There is still time to uh, ask well, uh, yeah. something if you want. Sorry, what happened? Oh. Oof. Uh, I, I don't know why, where I lost our show, but uh, please go to the end. Uh, Yes. Um, yes. I think it is soon time to end our session. If you do not have further questions, uh, it's it's unfortunately unfortunate that we haven't seen you. Who are I? We have only seen your names, but uh, uh, as as we have said, feel free to approach. Uh, any of us uh, anytime so here here were the email addresses of Claudio and myself and and by this email you already got earlier so uh, thank you for attending our webinar to today uh, feel very warmly welcome to apply to our program I really really hope that uh, I will see many of you starting in our program next autumn. So, thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, bye.